Hello again, it is I, Freeza700, and we are here to ask, what the fuck is the Slon? And we're going to discuss it right now. After the... So the Slon, as I touched upon in the Lizardman introduction lore video, if you haven't seen that, I recommend you do watch it. But the Slon represent more or less the priest but also the leaders and mages of the Lizardmen Society. Now, they are a different race. In fact, the whole Lizardmen Society is comprised of different races that each fill their own role. Well, this is the Slon and this is the role they fill. So what do the Slon reproduce? How do they do it? Well, there hasn't been a Slon birthed in a long time. The Slon that are present today are hundreds of years old hundreds of years old and that's because once the old ones left there hasn't been a new slon since so the spawning pits for whatever reason aren't spawning slon but they're still the same pits that spawned them like hundreds of years ago and they're still able to spawn other lizard men but for some reason they're not spawning slon that's strange maybe the slon are out of the old ones gaze or maybe the Slon are just so magically powerful that when the Vortex was created, there's no way for the Slon to be birthed because it requires a lot of magical energies for them to actually be born. Now, why do I say magical energies? After all, there are priests and leaders foremost. Mages are kind of secondary. Well, magic is what they're good at. They have zero muscle in their body mass. They're just giant, fat toads with no muscle whatsoever except for those to eat. They don't have much in the way of physical strength. So really, magic is their only way to defend themselves. But not only is it their only way to defend themselves, they are extremely good at magic. How good? In the 8th edition army book, the Slan priest is able to use all 8 lores of magic. 8 lores of magic. A good mage, the best mage, could do two lores, maybe three. Only a vampire has been seen to do three as far as I know, because vampires already start with blood magic and death magic. That's it. But a slan can go into death magic, he can go into high magic, he can go into fire magic, he can go into any magic and cast it perfectly. But not only do they have access to this really broad variety of spells, they also have access to a type of magic that no one else has. Geomancy. Now you may be thinking, well, geomancy, well, geo, geography. So probably something with the land, right? Close. Very, very close. But no cigar. So they have this geometric web. And this essentially covers the whole world. Now the geometric web it essentially allows the Slon to alter the planet as they see fit, but not only does it do that, it does a lot, lot more. It's kind of like a giant net of magic, where the Slon can easily just tap into it and do whatever they please. But these are long rituals, and the only Slon that is alive today who openly taps into the geomancy and fucks with the world as he so please is Lord Mazda Mundi. Yes. The genocidal toad, he is the one who is the perfect practitioner of geomancy. How good is geomancy, you may ask? How deadly powerful is it? Well, it's so powerful that it is theorized, and to some sources it was proven, that Mazda Mundi is the one who caused the massive earthquakes that shattered the dwarven empires and made them weak and open to the orcs. Now, why Mazda Mundi did this? Well, he was more or less following the plan of the old ones. But at the same time, well, Mazda Mundi doesn't really understand what's going on around the world outside him because all Slon stay inside their chambers. And they usually don't like to go out because they gotta study the great plan. And this is where their role in society fits. What do they do? Well, they gotta study the great plan. And the great plan is what's going to make them win. It's going to make them 
bring the old ones back, but not only bring the old ones back, but this great scheme, this great contraption of a plan is also gonna cure all their problems. Like Skaven, gone. High Elves, gone. Dark Elves, gone. Empire, gone. Vampires, gone. Corruption, gone. Whole planet, theirs. Now the problem is, is that, I've said this in the intro lore, but Slan are very intelligent. And they've spent thousands of years reading the same plaques over and over again from very, very different perspectives every time, and they're trying to decipher what the fuck to do. Now, you may think, well, that's not too hard. I mean, shit, Mazda Mundi says he's got the answer, which is genocide. Why aren't the others following him? Well, when Lustria was being invaded by Skaven, there was only one plaque that every Slon said was useless. They said this plaque was probably just poetry. Now, this plaque was called Sotek. Now, Sotek described of an event that would pretty much bring an apocalypse to Lustria and almost annihilate the, the Lizardmen. Now, the Slon are isolationists. They like to stay inside their star chambers. So while the Saurus and Skinks and Croxigors are getting their asses fucked by the Skaven, they keep saying, nah, this isn't that big of a threat. This isn't that big of a threat. Well... They ignored this plaque, and this plaque specifically said about this situation. So, how did they survive? Well, the Skink Priest enacted the plaque, and ever since then, the Slon are now starting to understand that maybe they're going about the Great Plan the wrong way. But at the same time, they still kind of cling to the idea that if they fuck up the Great Plan in any way, like doing a plaque and enacting its ritual even though it was meant for poetry use like they believe Sotek was then the whole great plan is failed it will fucking undo their society the world will be forever gone now this is kind of interesting is that the Slon are essentially immortal and when they fight they float on top of these platforms known as palanquins now, these palakines are very interesting because I don't know how the fuck to pronounce them, but they're also very interesting because they're just floating platforms that kind of take the, the slon away from most of the danger. Most, not all. But not only is it doing that, it allows the slon to kind of wake up and summon his magic. Now, why do I say the word wake up? Well, the slon are always hibernating always asleep in their own hibernation inside their mind deciphering all this information that the great plan has and constantly rereading the same stuff all this is done mentally too and while they're doing this they're also understanding magic and they're understanding it better and better and better as the day goes by so while a slon sleeps for a hundred years at first, he was only able to do one lore of magic. High magic. Okay, cool. All of a sudden, he wakes up 100 years later. Not only is he a master of high magic, but he somehow learned himself how to do light magic as well. Hmm. Then he goes to sleep for another 100 years. Wow, he somehow became a master of light magic and high magic. Now he knows fire magic and death magic. Holy shit. And that's the way this lawn works because their minds are so well developed and everything is severely undeveloped like their muscles and stuff that this allows them to have this very vast intellect to kind of rationalize and answer their own problems like if they're sitting there going oh fuck why are these two strings not coming together well if he just sits there and broods upon it he can come up with the answer really quickly but not only that He's going to come up with over a hundred answers, and each one's going to be correct. So, for a slon, there's many correct ways of doing things, but they're always looking for the most correct. And this is why the Great Plan is so hard for them, is that it's so contradictory and so kind of poetic, that they're not too sure what's the best solution. 
Mazda Mundi says it's extermination, but there are tons of plaques telling them to spare some of the races, to actually let them live in Lustria, which is a huge stress for a lot of them. They won't even fucking let anyone close, even the elves who saved their asses. So, it's kind of interesting what the Slan are. Now, when the Slan wake up, it takes a long time to actually stir them awake. And the reason why is that they're so deep in their thought that it's really hard for you to pull their physical being awake. Whereas their spiritual being is just out in their mind, studying and restudying, and then practicing all the magic that they know and also reading the great plan. But when a slan is woken up, this is a huge event. Many skinks and saurus and croxigars come around him to listen to his mumbled prophecies. Yes, they do mumble when they wake up. And when they wake up, it's more or less that they're kind of like in a drug-induced state, where they just kind of mumble something like, oh, humans killing, and then they just go back to sleep. And it's like, okay, well, uh, Skink Priest, what do you think that means? Um... Humans killing, I think that means we need to kill the humans before they kill us. And then they go out and do it. Now, of course, that's kind of like a far-fetched example, but most of the time the Slan are so deep in their sleep that sometimes when they try waking up the Slan to evacuate cities, they can't. The Slan are so deep in their sleep they can't even fucking wake up. So really, the biggest reason why Slan go extinct and the reason why they die is because they're so deep in hibernation that when their city finally is fell, when Skaven finally overrun it, when orcs finally break down the gates, when whoever the fuck it is breaks in, all they're gonna find are a bunch of sleeping toads who offer no resistance. Because again, physically they're not developed. It's all mental development. So they're just giant squishy toads that you can easily sink your blade into and slice up their insides. And before you know it, you pretty much killed all their leaders. So, that's the Slan. I hope you guys enjoyed. That answers more or less what the fuck they are. And that also answers a lot about how powerful they are. I hope you guys enjoyed. And see you guys next time. Comment down below what you think. Comment down below what other topics we should do. Besides that, I'm going to see you guys next time. Okay.